Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about the word idempotently or idempotently or the other 30 ways you can pronounce it. The way you pronounce it doesn't really matter. Ultimately what matters is that you know what the word means and you have some vague idea of how an idempotent request would be implemented. This came up the other day as Amanda was reading through the Rails guides trying to figure out how to phrase this for someone who might have English as a second language or someone who does speak English but has never seen the word before. Pretty simple once you get your head around what it's actually saying to do. Um, but it's like grossly overcomplicated by the fact that the word is just like, you know, foreign to native speakers. <laughs> so let's just take a look at this real quick. The basic idea is uh, you have a certain action that you, on your website. You press a button and you expect something to happen. If that thing has already happened before, you don't do it again. You just like go to the result. So maybe you have like a Stripe checkout, right? You click uh, purchase the order. You click purchase the order a second time because your internet's lagging or something. Who knows? Uh, you don't want to be charged twice. You want to be charged once. You don't want to be charged zero times because you are trying to actually purchase the thing. But you want one charge to happen and then you want to be, you know, redirected to the checkout page with a coupon that says, congratulations, your order was free because, I don't know, act of God or something. Now, the latter part of that will never happen. Uh, but we can at least do the former part and ensure that like a request only happens one time. So we're going to do this for posts because I feel like everyone can kind of relate to um, like a very basic blog post example. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have like an idempotent re create request. So, so not really how you would normally do it. I feel like there's not a lot of points in doing this. Like who cares if something gets made twice, but at least it, it'll show you like how to do this in other uh, examples. So I'm going to say Rails new video dash C tailwind. We're going to, oops, CH Ruby. We're going to create this with Tailwind just because uh, it looks prettier when you have the cool blue button there. So the only real extra step you have to do here is we're going to add something to our post so that it has like a unique ID. Then when we create the, the post, we just check like if a post with that ID already exists. If it does, we just redirect to that post because uh, we don't want to like throw an error. We, you know, we're not trying to tell them, hey, man, you, this is already created 404 error or something. We just want to be like, oh, yeah, you've already created this. You already clicked this before. So let me just send you there. So let's see the end of video. Run a code dot. And we'll test this through like uh, Postman. We'll also test it through through the browser. So you can see what this looks like for an API as well. OK, so we come in here. First thing I want to do, uh, click the GitHub thing. So it leaves us alone. We're going to say Rails G scaffold. We're going to create a scaffold with a post. I'm going to backspace this because it's a spoiler. It's going to be a scaffold with a post, a title, and a body of type text. Standard stuff. Go ahead and click Create. OK, now we're going to do a Rails G migration. So at this point, we're doing the uh, idempotent stuff, right? We're going to say, all right, I want to request UUID of type string. So you can name this whatever you want to. This can be Apple Cart ID or just Apple Cart. I don't really care. Colon string, that's the type. And then unique is just saying, make this a unique thingy. We can run this migration. Or we can, you know, generate the migration. We can do a bin slash dev because we have Tailwind, so we use bin slash dev. So we have a proc file over here, uh, and then hopefully, if we come over here to localhost port three thousand and refresh, we get our migrations thing. So we click the pretty little button, takes us to our post page. Cool. Okay, so now in our controllers and our post controller, we have a very standard looking controller here. So the only thing I really want to do here is come into the create action because like our our update and other actions are fine. Usually, a lot of these are already like impotent by the like nature of, of how they act. Like if you're going to get the posts, you're going to get the posts, right? Uh, if you're going to like maybe argue like delete a post might have different behavior, but you are probably going to delete a post. You're going to delete a post. Um, if you delete a post four times, you'll delete it once and then three times you'll get redirected, I guess. Uh, but in this case with the create, how we're going to do this is we're just going to say, uh, let's grab a request uh, ID or request UUID is equal to params request UUID. Okay. And because we generated that migration separately, we don't have to permit the parameter for it down here. Uh, we can just grab it right here. We're also not going to put in our post params. All that's fine. So let's come over to our uh, views, posts, and our post form, I guess. So in our post form, all we really want to do is just give this a hidden tag. We'll do this like I don't know, down here. You can do it up top. Doesn't really matter. We'll just do it right here. So it's easier to see where it is. We're going to say hidden tag. Oops, uh, sorry, it's hidden field tag. One day I'll remember this. 
and then just the name of our thing. This would be like Apple cart in other examples here. I'm calling it request UUID secure random dot UUID. And because this is called request UUID in our migration down here, remember in our second migration, we called this request UUID and we call it request UUID here. When we go to update this later, this will just be stored in the hidden field tag, you know, so no big deal there. We will get back to how you could potentially exploit this in a minute though. So now we have this in our form and we have this over here. We're not really doing anything in our post controller. So let's say we get this request UUID back, right? We're under create action. We get this. Now what do we want to do? Well, like I said, first thing we want to do is we want to check if a post with this UUID already exists. So we're going to say existing post is equal to post.find by. And then we're just going to find by that request UUID. So we just pass it in twice. And now we can check, do we have this or do we not have this? So we're going to say if uh, existing post, you know, dot present, whatever you want to do, else, end. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try and keep this pretty simple. So I'm just going to say this is going to render some JSON that has the existing post with a status of okay. Uh, and then I'm going to come down here, else. Uh, and then just normally, I don't like doing this. I'd have some kind of like return here or something to, to get us out of here. But I'm going to do this so that it's a bit clearer what we're doing here else we're going to do whatever's down here. Uh, the only thing we might want to do here is like for a post.new, we want might want to do like post params dot merge the request uh, UUID if we want to. And then we have this in our at post and then we just do the rest of the stuff the same. So pretty much everything else stays the same. We just have some extra logic here that just says, hey, check if this post already exists, right? Uh, and you can even like get rid of this if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so now we have this. We have this form. Let's go ahead and let's try to create a post. So we'll come in here and we'll say test and case. We'll click uh, create. Let me hit enter a couple times. Click create. Hit F11. Scroll up a bit, and you can see right here we have the request UUID, and it generates this random string of stuff right here. Now, theoretically, I could exploit this by just submitting a bunch of garbage and hoping that I like magically intercept one of these that belongs to someone else, and then eventually you have like a collision or something. So what some places will do, like maybe Stripe, uh, let's say this is for orders, they might prefix this with orders dash and then this ID, or it would even be more specific. It would be like the user ID dash orders dash this ID so that it becomes harder and harder for them to intercept this and you know make up some crap. In that case, you probably just come into your post controller. You have your request UUID right here and you just say something like this is equal to, I don't know, user or sorry, order dash plus the params ID or something. It's pretty easy to do. You just construct it yourself, probably do it in a way that's less like spaghetti code than this is, but you get the idea. But this is fine. You're really never going to like notice this on this front end unless you can get into the very specific case that causes this to like fire a bunch of times. But where you can notice it is through the API. So we're going to come over here to Postman. You can just download Postman or you can just, you know, do this through the terminal if you want to. I have an example here. We'll just create a new a new request real quick. So the way we're going to do this, I'm, I'm going to hit Control Plus so you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to change this to a post request. I'm going to come over to the headers. I'm going to say this is going to be, what is it? Like the content type. Content type is going to be application slash JSON. We come over to the body. We say this needs to be raw. And then we already know what we need to put in here, right? So we're, oops, we're going to do um, post because we know it needs a post. It needs a title. We can just put something in here. I'm going to typo that. That's fine. Then we need a body. Uh, I don't know, lorem ipsum, right? Uh, and then you can just come down here. Oops, you can come down here. And this is where you could put your uh, request. What, what do we call it? We call it the request UUID. So we'll say request uh, underscore UUID, right? Yeah, okay. Something like this. And then in here, you just put like, I don't know, like unique uh, request one, two, three, right? Let me get rid of this extra comma because it's upset at me. So we have a post request. This is going to go to uh, localhost port 3000 slash post.json because we're trying to go to the JSON endpoint. So let me move this over here. Let me grab the terminal and full screen this on the other side. Hit enter a couple times so that we can move this all up. Now I'm going to click send. We get an error. So we scroll up here and we take a look at what the error is. And we see uh, cannot verify CSRF token authenticity. So what we're going to do is a little bit hacky, but we come in here to the post controller and we're just going to say skip before action, verify authenticity token. And we're only going to do this if the request.format is of type JSON. So just for the sake of testing, we're going to say if it's a JSON request, just skip the verification of the authenticity token. And now if we come over here and I hit enter a couple more times and we hit send, 
you can see we insert this into the database. It gives us a URL right here of localhost port 3000 slash post slash 2.json, right, with the rest of our stuff. And if I hit this again, you can see here that we're no longer getting green text in our terminal. We've created it already. So we're just saying like, hey, man, it's created, I guess. It was already created, but we're just going to tell you it's created again. Uh, and it's going to work the same time. Every every single time you call this, your end result is just going to be, here's your updated at, created at, and all that other stuff. So this is kind of the point, right? Like it just, it makes it a little bit better for the application to, to work under that workload to make sure that things only happen one time. Uh, let's say you have like a button to turn on the light. You press the button, the light turns on the first time. You press it 10 more times, the light stays on. You don't have a light switch where the kid flips it up and down until he burns out the light bulb or whatever. But yeah, that's basically all I wanted to talk about today. Um, it was just something that like came up on Twitter and I always feel like everyone tries to explain it in like super complicated ways. There were some pretty good explanations in, in this comment thread, but like if you ever see this on Reddit, people just have like the strangest, uh, <laughs> the strangest explanations. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this was informative. Hopefully I covered this correctly. Uh, if not, you can always go down to the comments and see all the people calling me dumb and what it actually means. But for now, thank you for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.